how God's love persuaded me. Oh my. How many of you ever been persuaded? Hallelujah. I've been persuaded. That neither life nor death, things to come, things present, nothing shall be able. I've been persuaded. I've been persuaded. Amen. And nothing shall separate me. Because I've been persuaded. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm hearing uh, someone from Victory saying, you can't make me doubt. I know too much. Too much about his goodness. Hallelujah. Too much about his love. You can't make me doubt him. Tell your neighbor, I know too much. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you can't make me doubt him. Deacon, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much. Too much about his goodness. Amen. I think he's a I think he's up there, but when he walks around, it's almost 90, it's from victory, but he says, you can't make me doubt it. Amen, yeah, yeah. brother Henry Lee, I know too much, too much about his goodness, and too much about his book almighty, you can't make me doubt it. Hallelujah, I know too much. Amen, our response to reading, I praise the Lord, that you can't, my circumstances can't make me doubt it. Amen, no matter what comes and what goes, you can't make me doubt it. He's persuaded me. Mom, he's persuaded me. And I too much of his goodness and his grace. Amen. When I deserve death, he said, No life. And so you can't make me doubt him. I know too much. Amen. I'm hoping that anybody that's on Zoom who heard me sing doesn't get any ideas. Amen. It's time for the responsive reading. the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Couldn't nobody die for me. Amen. I know too much. Amen. Our response of reading this read. I'll read the unbold and you'll read the bold. Bitter was our bondage to false beliefs. Dangerous were the doctrines that nearly destroyed you. False teachings and preachings ensnared you. But by God's own hand did God bring you out of the wilderness. With gladness we remember our liberation. Painful were our afflictions. You were dying in darkness because they caused you to be afraid to live in the light. You were weakened by fear and sickened by shame. But by God's own breath did God restore you. And though you were dead, yet do you live. With joy we remember our healing. Many and mournful were your days of uncertainty. You were once uncertain and unsure, questioning your callings, your gifts, and your anointing. Yet, by God's own voice, did God speak to you, declaring, I've called you for such a time as this. With thanksgiving, we remember our salvation. Beloved, today we remember the God who heard our cries and was moved by our suffering. Let us not forget the glory, the wonder, and majesty of our God in whom we live, move, and have our being all together. Lord, because we remember how you freed us, we serve you. Because we remember how you healed us, we love you. Because we remember how you kept us, my God, we pray for you. Because we remember how you made ways for us, we worship you. With the fruit of our lips, the shouts of joy and acclamation, we the redeemed of God declare. Look where God brought us from. Amen. Look where God has brought us from. Amen. You loved us. Amen. Certain words jumped out of that. You loved us. Amen. You healed us. Anybody got a witness that God is healed? Hallelujah. You remember me. In my affliction, you remember me. Amen. But you kept me when I didn't want to be but there were times I did not want to be kept. Amen. Deacon, there were times I wanted to say something and God shut my mouth. I was kept. 
Amen. Amen. Don't do it, son. And God kept me. Yes. Yes. Amen. You made ways. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. You made ways. Hallelujah. Yes. Gave me refreshing water in desert yes. places. Yes. Good God Almighty. God, you did it. Yes. Amen. In wastelands, God, you did it. Hallelujah. Couldn't nobody do it but you, Jesus. Yes. You did it. And I won't give nobody else the glory for what you did. Good God about it. Nobody but you, Lord. When I was in trouble, you brought me over. Nobody but you. Good God about it. Hallelujah. You kept us. Amen. And so now, God, we praise you and we worship you. We give your name the glory. But not unto us. Amen. But unto you belongs the glory and the honor. And with our lips, the same lips. Amen. That we've done other things with those lips. Yet with these lips. Good God Almighty, we bless you, good God Almighty, and we have shouts of joy and acclamation, amen. Some of y'all just look too much to the future, but you forget where God brought you, amen. But if you've been on the journey as long as some of us been, amen, look how far he's brought us from. Look how far God's brought us from. He has kept us day by day. Look how far the Lord, amen. And then we would sing, he kept us. He kept us. Amen. He kept us. Amen. Amen. When the enemy wanted to take us under, he y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He kept us. When sickness would have taken us under, he kept us. Amen. When our mental health was deteriorating. Good God Almighty, God. Listen. Oh my God. He kept us. Amen. From the listen, from the attacks of people. Because sometimes it wasn't the enemy, it was the people. Amen. My familiar friend. But God kept us. I'm going to read this. Amen. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Amen. But I bless the Lord that he kept us. Hallelujah. Listen. Amen. From danger seen and unseen. That's not trivial in these, these last and evil days. Amen. Amen. But there were some unseen dangers that God said no. And I'm going to help y'all out. There were some seen dangers. Good God Almighty. Yes, my God. There were some things that were assigned to us. Amen. There were some people that were danger to us. And God said, not so. I'm going to move you out of the way. Amen. Amen. And so I bless the Lord that he, let, he kept us. Yeah. Amen. And we don't have, let me help y'all, but nothing. We don't have no visible sign of his displeasure. Come on. Amen. Our church motto, this is the Lord's church and Jesus is Lord. This is the church that's being established by his word. This is the church that love is building. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. Listen, I want to welcome everybody, amen, to the Lord's church, amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice, amen, and be glad in it, amen. Ain't no need to be sad about it, amen. You can't do nothing about it, amen. You might as well go, God Almighty, you might as well go ahead and praise him, amen. Because listen, if you praise him, go, God Almighty, he'll make everything all right. Amen. My praise is not a panacea. My praise is the solution. Yes. Amen. Amen. My, listen, my praise is not a panacea. I'm not using my praise, amen, to quell some feeling. My praise is my solution to my issue. Yes, wow. Amen. Amen. Listen, because when I praise him, he makes everything. Amen. My praise is how I shift the atmosphere. Good God Almighty. Amen. It's how I shift it. Amen. Anybody know how to shift the atmosphere? Amen, amen. Listen, I'm trying to help y'all learn how to shift the atmosphere. When I was depressed, I lifted my eyes into the hills from what's come of my help. My help come from the Lord who made heavens and earth. I want to thank the Lord for all of our visitors, amen, that are out there. Thank God for family that are here. Amen, I praise the Lord. Amen, this is a church that love is building. Amen, love means we got to meet people where they are. Amen, we want to meet them where they are. And so we praise the Lord. Amen. For you and you. Do me a favor. Tell your neighbor, I love you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Now, listen, if you're shady, don't say it. Amen. Amen. If you're shady, if you're shot at, amen, don't say it. But I want you to go ahead and tell your neighbor, I love you. And there's nothing. Now, I'm going to help you out. If you got an enemy in the church, try to repeat now. And there's nothing. Because God's requirement, this is how we should... God, that people will know that we're his disciples by the love that we have for one another. Amen. Tell you that this is a beloved community. I'm going to help you out. It's not a perfect community, but it's beloved. Amen. And so, we, and so we, and there's nothing. Amen. You can talk about me as much as you please. There's not one thing 
Come on. Matter of fact, Jesus Hallelujah. said, when folks hate you and despise you, you love them. Love them. And when you love them, he calls a fire yeah. on their head. Yeah. Amen. You don't take revenge on them. You just love them. Yeah. Amen. And I'm determined I'm going to love everybody. I'm not going to be angry at nobody. Amen. Amen. Be I, listen. Amen. Because it ain't going to do nothing but make you bitter. Amen. And some of y'all need to be delivered from the yoke of bondage and bitterness in your life. Amen. I praise God. Amen. That I'm free. Oh, yeah. Amen. From anything that would have helped me. Yeah. Amen. And so I bless the Lord. Thank you, so Lord. we thank the Lord. Hope you all feel welcome. Oh, yeah. Amen. Welcome once. Welcome twice. Welcome three times. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. His name is, then you go to preach it. Amen. His name is a strong top. The righteous run in. And they are saying, God has given him now that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For unto us, uh -huh, unto us a child is given. And the government, my God, all ruling powers shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And we used to say, what's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Power in the name of. Jesus. Healing in the name of. Jesus. Deliverance in the name of. Jesus. Demons tremble in the name of. Good God Almighty, what's his name? Good God Almighty, I've been down in Jesus' name. I don't care what the world says about me. Amen. I've been down. In Jesus' oh, yes, name. Yes. Amen. So when I get in trouble, I don't call certain people. I call Jesus. Amen. Because some of y'all got opinions, but you don't have Jesus. Amen. I need to go to the source sometime for my answer. Amen. And I want y'all to know my source is Jesus. Life would be worthless. Without him, but all things. In Jesus' name. All right. It's offering time in the sanctuary. Amen. I gave mine. Who's going to come? Luke's he's coming. Amen. He's going to stand in front of me, but y'all won't see me because he's so tall. Amen. And I praise the Lord for him. You can stand in front, son. Amen. I remember you can do it down here. All right. Now that's Wilmington Chester. Amen. So, amen. We give through tithely. Praise the Lord. If you have a cash um, offering, amen, please come on up. Those of you that have given through tithely, why don't you walk around, amen, and touch the plate. Turn it upside from son. I know this Watch me through. Watch me through. Take it away. Take it away from me. 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 Take Amen. Praise the Lord. So if it doesn't, you might want to, you can log out. It'll still go to the right place, but we were able to. We're actually working with Tively. Tively, I think, is a bot. Bot. We can't speak to anybody. You have to um, have a meeting through um, your Asia or somewhere, and we all. So finally, we were able to get um, the help to assist in changing the address to this address. So if you do use the Jefferson Hill address, which we used initially, um, it should now show, if you go in and out, it should show the new our, our address here. We also are trying to get, um, for those that are using it once in a while, a way to use the QR code. Yes. Um, so we're working on that, but once again, we have to wait till it comes around to our country to talk to us. But it's working well. Amen? Amen. All right. For the announcements today, we have, um, if you can keep in mind, and if you're interested in joining us for, for September 24th for our meeting um, for Moving Forward, we need all of you. 
Um, so anybody that can meet with us and help out the ministry, um, the ministry that basically is a scholarship fund that we eventually want to get into. But right now, as we work towards planning that and getting all of that um, fundraising and banks all together, we need your interest or support if you can join us here after service on September 24th. We also are having a purpose for praise. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, meeting um, after service to plan the continue planning for our purposeful praise, praise explosion. Yes. Explosion. Um, the weekend of November tenth through twelfth. But we have several rooms now. Um, I just need to be in both at at one time. I for that. Amen. 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 Um, also, keep in mind the purposeful praise ministry is having a dinner sale Amen. on. October 8th, that menu includes fried chicken, oh, fried that. fish, oh, green beans, rice and beans, macaroni and cheese, a choice of two of the sides. Um, it also comes with water or soda and a mini cake, all for the price of $15. We will deliver um, depending on the amount of um, plates you order, but more information will come to that later. So please join us and support the Purposeful Praise Ministry on October 8th for their dinner sale. Amen? Amen. Amen. November, October 22nd, um, let me go back the other way. November 23rd on Thanksgiving, we are going to serve dinner here for the community. Amen. I don't know why yeah. the congregation is listed on here. We're not feeding y'all. We're um, going to feed the community. Yeah. That's what we're going to embark on that interest of ours that we've always wanted to do. So, we need all of you the same way we've needed you in the past, as far as donations and cooking and things of that nature. The cooking may be a little different, because when, when you guys donated turkeys and those things, you just donated them. So, this time we may need, we may need some of you that like to cook, that enjoy cooking, to make some food um, to help in serving on, October, on November 23rd. So, to get that in order on October 22nd after service, we're going to have a meeting for everybody who can attend. Uh, we need help with um, donations of food, um, cooking of the food, mm -hmm. and we need people to be prepared to help us set up, clean up, and serve. Mm -hmm. We Amen. also have uh, set up a menu that include that we'll share with you, but there are some items on that menu that you can buy. So those who can't cook, or don't want a cookie, can buy and support us. Yeah, um, we have soda, water, cakes, and pies, and things of that nature that if you're not able to cook, you might want to purchase that. But we're aiming for 50 people to serve that. Amen, day. that's right. Uh, so this is from the committee. <laughs> 50 people. Well, but we'll be here. We want to serve starting. I'm giving you a lot of information ahead of time so you can get in your head. November 23rd is Thanksgiving. At 1 o'clock, we, we want to be able to serve up to 50 people like that. So please join us October 22nd after the church service so that we can get that all in order. Amen? Amen. Amen. You guys yes. talk about things. Please govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Thank you, Brother David. I appreciate all of your announcements. Amen. So listen. I'm, I'm glad that people catch vision. Amen. I didn't ask people. They, oh, I don't know what that was. They, they, kept, they caught the vision. I didn't have to ask. Amen. And I appreciate I mean, those individuals to understand that we're trying to be in community, um, in the community. Amen. And so we praise the Lord for that. Courtney, you're not baking a turkey? Okay, you're the donor. Yeah. Amen. Can we celebrate Courtney? She was our epic award winner. So I will be here. I'm a cook, so I guess I'll be one of the people on the list and I'll cook something. Amen. Praise our God. Praise Amen. God. So I'll be in the meetings. Amen. So we're, we're, we're a growing ministry. Amen. And we need everyone's help. Amen. Not just the 20%, because many times at work and in ministry, it is the 20% of the people yes. that do 80% of the work. Then it's the 80% of the people that bother the 20%. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let that sit there. Amen. All right, 
God bless you. Amen. Amen. On, I don't have the dates, on the 21st of October, amen, begins our eighth Dunamis, Dunamis Conference. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, the 27th. Thank you so much. Jennifer, you didn't call out and give me the right information. Me and Jennifer had a conversation about when I'm off, Jennifer's supposed to be on. Then Jennifer let me call out. Jennifer, on my talking points, there's no date, so I got it wrong. All right, on the 27th, amen, is our 8th Dunamis Conference. The 21st, something else is going on for certain people. Um, we're having guest music um, at our church, amen. Nick Reynolds and Family Affair will be singing here at Empowering Word. They are excited. We are excited to have them, amen. They are recording artists, amen. I think they just sang with John P. King, amen. They just, uh, they, <laughs> that's funny. I like it. I like it. I like it. They sang with John P. Key. Uh -huh. I got rehearsal next week. Uh -huh. I have rehearsal Monday to sing with them amen. or something else. But they will be, Before, amen. Sir. And hopefully they won't have me sing with them when they sing here. Amen. amen. That won't count. Amen. Our guest preacher, amen, will come from my family church. Amen. I call it my family church because my son is still there. Amen. I was there as a young child. Amen. Brother David. Amen. And when I say young child, I'm talking about 14, amen. And Elder Wilbur Drayton, we come from that church. And Bishop Stacy Roberts in the Greater Community Bible Tabernacle, amen, will be our guest church. And I'm going to tell you, my son called and said, Sister Joyce announced it to the church. My friend Joyce, the church secretary, Sister amen. Joyce announced it to the church. So that means the church is coming. Amen. And so we will have guests. Amen. Bishop Roberts will be ready. He's been here before. Amen. And so we honor the Lord. Please, ma'am, sir. The choir will be here. Amen. The guest church will be here. Amen. Get your seat. And then on Saturday, we have guest speakers. We will have a continental breakfast and lunch will be provided for that day. Y'all know how we do it. We have Brother David Henry Sr. Amen. Right. As a presenter. Hey, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Pastor, Pastor John Clayton, Pastor Dana Devine, amen, will be presenting, amen, Caprice Verdejo, Angela, Angel Gravely, amen, will be presenting, amen, amen, we'll hear from Dr. Charmaine Green, amen, amen, a, a doctorate in theology will be coming, amen, she's a sweet woman of God, and she'll be coming to talk and share with us, amen, get ready, saints, amen, Paula Hollis, Amen. I've known her since she was a little girl. Amen. She's written books and has started her own consulting business. Amen. And she will be here to share with us. Bishop Romaine Gibbs. Amen. Will be a speaker. I saw him going to the gym and I was going to see Pastor Dana and Keisha. He was going to the gym. No, no. I was going to I was going to see him. Now what Bishop Romaine, I hope he sees this. Amen. Y'all can tell him I said this. Amen. Bishop Romaine jumped, looked in the car and said, that, uh, he called me, uh, sir, I need to get you to the gym. Oh, that's what he said? That's what he said. Oh, Amen. Yeah. So that's the way I got to catch Bishop Gibbs. <laughs> Amen. On the way to the gym. Oh, Amen. Oh, no, we have his assistance information. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So we bless the Lord. He will be, he's excited to be here. Amen. And share with us. Amen. And then on that Sunday is our official day. Amen. And I bless the Lord for those that would be elevated. Amen. And those who change their exchange their credentials and we are part of us of our church. We bless the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor, this is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. It's marvelous. Don't, it's marvelous. It's marvelous Good God Almighty. Amen. Yes. Out of all the listen, can I tell you all something? You gotta look for marvelous to see God's marvelous. Okay, okay. You gotta look for the marvelous. I thought that in my spirit. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, I talk to people, and people are looking for big things. They're looking for this, that, and the other. Listen, every little bit of God's glory I take. Listen, when I see Lucy, I see God's glory. Amen. When I see Courtney, her parents were here last week. Amen. We didn't run them out to church. Amen. 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 That was God's glory. Amen. Listen, the hymn writer said, My father is omnipotent, he's a God of might and miracles. Amen. And the, I think the other part was, and when he saved my soul, and then he made me whole, it was a miracle. Uh, 
of love and grace. So registration until September the 30th. How many of y'all paid your registration? Raise your hand, Brother David. Amen. We paid registration. Amen. I paid my registration. Registration until the 30th is $50. Amen. On October the 1st to the 28th, it is $60. Our young people are $25. For those of you that have multiple children or those of you that would need assistance or some type of scholarship, the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. And then we praise the Lord for that. Is that all right? We do have ads are coming in. Amen. Me and Jennifer will be going about looking at all the ads and placing ads and templates. Amen. God is doing. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God gets the glory. Amen. Y'all not excited and the devil gets nothing. Listen, if you let the devil in, the devil will take over. Amen. But the Bible says don't give place. Amen. And so we don't talk about what the devil does. We talk about what God does. Amen. And so we give God the glory. So I'm grateful for that. If you need any assistance, amen, the young lady in the back, Sister Jennifer, amen, will be able to answer all of your questions. Because you all know if you ask the pastor about all these administrative things, amen, I'm going to send you to Jennifer anyway. Praise our God. Amen. And so we bless the Lord. All right. Another announcement. I want to thank all of you who have uh, gave me and sent me, uh, me and my sister, your prayers, amen, and your condolences, amen. I thank God for you when I went into the service, amen. I praise God. It was a wonderful, uh, what did they call the spray? And that's what it's called, Deacon. It was a wonderful spray of flowers from Empowering Word Ministry. So I bless the Lord and I thank the Lord for all of you, amen. And what I said, I got up and I was graceful, amen. I was saved, amen. And God blessed me and I have words to say. Amen. And I said, all is well. Yes. Amen. And I want you to know that all is well. Oh, Amen. Lord. And God will do what God is going to do. I will have other announcements for you, for you all, not today. Amen. About some organizational things. Amen. That I've shared with other people in the church, but I don't want to share with the whole church as of yet. I have to work these things out. And once I work these things out, amen, I will share these things. They will not be a surprise to you. Amen. But they will be put in they will, they will they will be put in formality. Is that all right? I'm gonna write the same thing that I require of you. Amen. I require myself to put them in writing. Amen. And get good consultation before we move in the next place. But tell your neighbor God is taking us somewhere. Somewhere. Amen. So listen, God is don't say that. Amen. God is taking us somewhere. All right, and so at this time, amen, those of our other announcements. If you have any questions, catch me. Amen. As I'm running around. Amen. And I'll be able to assist you. Amen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, come to Bible study. Amen. Come to Bible study. Amen. Those of you that can meet me here in prayer at 12 o'clock. Amen. I meet. Amen. And get things in order from 10 to 12. And then at 12 o'clock, we're here. Amen. In prayer. Amen. And you can meet us if your schedule allows. You can drop in. Amen. You don't have to fall out and mess your clothes up. Just come in. Amen. And sit in the presence. Amen. In the presence of God, where you will find peace. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Now, don't be, the lights aren't turned all up because everybody, we want y'all to focus. Amen. On what God is doing. Amen. Some people lay out. Amen. Some people clap. Amen. Sometimes we pray loud and sometimes we just sit. Tell your neighbor, I need to sit in God's presence. Amen. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. That's why some of us are disturbed. Amen. Because we don't sit in God's presence. Amen. I just heard God say peace. Amen. So, of us, amen. We get our head too much, but not in God's presence. Amen. You need to quiet the voices and things in your head and get in God's presence. Amen. A lot of us got opinions, but we're not in the presence. Stop having opinions and be in God's presence. Amen. 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 The Lord is in this holy temple. Let all the earth be what? Silent before him. Amen. So, you can meet us in prayer. Amen. You can meet us on Sun in Sunday school. We have lovely books. Amen. That you don't have to pay for. When I used to go to church, they made you pay for your book. When you lost your book, you had to pay for your book. Amen. But we provide the books to you. And you can meet us. Pardon me, sir. And you have their own books now. From the superintendent. Amen. From the superintendent. Can we celebrate the superintendent? Brother David is the superintendent. He's the interim superintendent. Y'all pray for him. All right. So we're going to do something. Listen, um, you got a little something I can before you get up. He, he can find me a little something, and then that I can get up to upset the atmosphere. <laughs> 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 
All right, come on. The blood of your lips. The blood that Jesus shed for me is personal.
from day to day, it will never out of your head. I think this scripture says, God said it once, twice will I say this, amen, that power belongs to God. Good God Almighty, power belongs to God. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate forth. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Lord of all. Listen, you better crown him with your praise. Hallelujah. You better crown him with your praise. Amen. You better crown him with your praise. God is worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. God, we ascribe to you glory and we ascribe to you honor. We give you the honor that's due to your name. You're worthy of the glory.
to say what it is, but I'm touching it now. Hallelujah. Listen, tell you, I make space for you. Amen. I make space for your thing that you're touching and agreeing with God. Hallelujah. Be blessed the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, worship. Come on, worship. Amen. Come on, worship. You got to feel it in your spirit that it's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Thomas said, I don't believe that you're the Savior. Can I touch you? Well, I, you know, sometimes, amen, you need a, you need a, reass, a reassuring touch from God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need a reassuring touch. Amen. That God's going to do what he said. It's going to be all right. Amen. It's going to be all right. Amen. In our lives, we have different circumstances that come up. You might have been all right in the last thing. <laughs> With God Almighty, you might have been all right, Tasha, in the last thing. But this thing, you're not sure whether you're going to be all right. Amen. And you need some reassurance. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just heard God say, comfort my people. Hallelujah, that their warfare is accomplished. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my. Let the daughter know that her warfare is accomplished. Your daughter about it is something somebody is warring over. God said, your warfare is accomplished. Your daughter about it, I'm going to fight on your behalf. I'm going to war in the spirit on your behalf. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. That thing that you're worrying about, God's going to war. That thing that you're moaning and groaning in the spirit about. The Holy Ghost is taking your prayer up. Now you hear what I'm saying with moans and groanings that cannot be uttered. Listen, I believe God can do it. I believe there's some things that you haven't spoken that God's getting ready to do. Some things or some burdens you're carrying, God's getting ready to do. Some things that you haven't spoken, God's coming for that. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty, God's sending His word. He's sending His presence in the room now to come for it. Good God Almighty, tell, tell God, come for it, God. Send your word and I'm our Savior. I want you to come for it. Oh, God, I want you to come for it. Hey, good God about it. I want you to come for it. That thing I haven't spoken to nobody about, God, I want you to come for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We honor the Lord. All right. Listen, there was a scripture I read when I came in. Sometimes you need the spirit of agreement. It is a divine principle. Amen. Amen. The spirit of agreement. Amen. Stop getting around kill. My bishop used to call them killer dealers. Amen. Killer dealers that don't speak life into you. Amen. You know, ignore that. Amen. And the problem is some of us get around killer dealers and we can't shake off what they dumped on us. Good God Almighty. Amen. Amen. But I want somebody with the spirit of agreement. Woo! Bless God. The spirit of agreement. Amen, that all is well. Amen, that God is coming soon. Amen, God's going to do what he said. All right, I think we're going to get out early. The preacher get, got it, got an excuse. Amen. Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. If she's not feeling well, we're going to pray. Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Sneaker went out there. Amen, we're going to pray. That's not. This is the scripture I'm going to read to you. 
Amen. And I thank you. Listen, I'm determined, that I'm dream, not to be deterred. Hallelujah. Deacon, I'm determined. Amen. The old saints used to say I was stubborn. That was determined. Amen. Amen. They saw it as something negative because I wouldn't move off what I knew that God said to me, Mother. I wouldn't move from it. And I didn't let them say nothing. that They could say whatever they wanted to say, Alberta. But down in my soul, I knew what God said. Amen. And I'm going to tell your name, I'm determined to see this through. I'm determined. Elder Drayton, I'm determined. Amen. I'm determined. I'm determined. Listen, I'm determined to see this through. I want y'all to hear me. Amen. Elder Drayton's been seeing me a long time. He's determined to see God through me. Good God, good God Almighty. Amen. Elder Drayton saw something in me when I was 15, 16 years old. Amen. He's determined to see God through in me. Amen. I'm determined to see God. No matter what comes, what comes with me. Amen. I'm just going to read this scripture because it was it was life to me. Amen. Exodus, the 15th chapter and the 26th verse. Amen. Then the preacher going to come if you want to come. He can close this out and benedict us. And the 26th verse said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight. Don't do what's right in the people's sight. Do what's right in God's sight. Amen. And the voice of the people is not the voice of God. We have to learn how to distinguish between this. And some people speak with exuberance and they speak with passion. Amen. But that voice might not be the voice of God. And we're so used to hearing loud voices. Amen. But God told the prophet, I'm going to speak in a still. Good God Almighty, can you cry your spirit enough to hear me in the quietness? Right? Then you have to do what is right in his sight. Give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. And then he said, I will put this and I will put none of these diseases on you, which I brought on the Egyptians. Because I want y'all to know that the people of God can carry illnesses and sicknesses that the world cannot. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Old church mother, amen, from Christian Tabernacle said, there are things that are taking people out in the world, but they don't take the saints out. Amen. Ah, wow. Right. And because a testimony to you, but it takes them out. Amen. He said this, because I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the God that heals you. I am the God that heals all of your diseases. I am the God that sent my word to heal you. I am the Lord that healed you. Be encouraged that God is still the God that heals us. Amen. He heals us emotionally. Amen. He heals us spiritually. He heals us financially. All right. You want to close this out? When you got something you're going to say, we're going home. He has a couple do dads. Amen. And we're going to get out. Amen. And so let's receive. Amen. It's uh, sassy. All right. Right, she's fine. Amen. We praise the Lord. I'm glad that God can show up. Amen. Amen. And, you know, some of us want the usual suspects. Amen. Amen. But tell, when I tell your neighbor, when I bring it, God comes. Amen. When I bring it, um, they, they won't understand it after a while. When I bring what God gave me and you bring what God gave you, amen, we are unstoppable. Amen. We're unstoppable. Of the Drayton and Alberta bring what they bring, and I bring what I bring. And amen, amen. We're unstoppable. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have the victory. All right, come on, son. Would y'all receive Elder Sir Jazz Carl Watson? He's gonna be short, I guess. Amen. He's gonna be short because this always happens. He set me up to be the worship leader, and it was a setup. Amen. And so I will call him on tomorrow. I will call him tomorrow and I will deal with him accordingly for the seven. Amen. So, yes, my bishop said, if you could do it in 15 minutes, you could praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord, church. Just lift your hands and say, God, thank you for a victory. Thank you for a victory that I won't have to fight for. Victory I won't have to struggle for. A victory I can overcome as I overcome my thought processes. As I overcome anxiety. As I let you handle my depression. Let you handle my panic. Let you handle my uh, deformities. Let you handle my insecurities. Tell somebody I'm so glad he gets the victory. I'm so glad he gets the victory. He gets it. I, I've given, 
I've given a lot of glory and a lot of victory to a lot of people down the years that didn't deserve it, wasn't qualified for it. But tell somebody, when I turned it over to Jesus, he worked it out. He turned it over to Jesus. And I stopped worrying about it. I turned it over to the Lord and he worked it out. Everybody got a workout feeling this morning? Tell somebody, it's going to work out for me, church. It's, it's gonna just reach a... Just look across, look around, and look back at somebody and tell somebody, he's going to work it out for me. He's going he's gonna to work it out for me. I'm not worried about the A to the B to the C, but I know eventually he's going to work it out for me. I'm going to get to my checkpoint. I'm going to get to my, he's going to wave that checkered flag and tell me to come in and tell me that when I get there, I got the victory. Sometimes the frustrating part about salvation is he gives you the flag, but he never gives you the fulfillment of what's going to go through in between. That's right. That's the first testimony. That's frustrating for me. He, you showed me great visions and great lights, and you showed me applause and all that, but you did not tell me that I was going to go through loneliness and hardship and burden and brokenness and being put out of my house and losing my car and losing my job. But testimony, I still got victory. That's that's what happens, and that's what matters in the case. I still got victory. Got a few flaws. Got a few. <laughs> I got a few flaws. I got, I got some things to work out. Some people, if I told them my story, they might move their seat from my row. But tell somebody, I got a few flaws. But I still got victory. I still got victory. All right. 15 minutes, right? So we're going to start here. Uh, let's go to Genesis 31. Go to Genesis 31. It's always weird when you're the musician who got to preach because you can hear like the soft soothing music, soft music you want to hear in the background. Uh, same thing for Sam. <laughs> All right, Genesis oh, 31. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's go from the third verse. We're going to walk a little bit. <clears throat> so Genesis 31, the third verse. Then the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your father and grandfather and to you, your relatives there, and I will be with you. Now we're going to go to Genesis 32. And we're going to go to the 22nd chapter, Genesis 32, the 22nd chapter. Genesis 32, the 22nd chapter. Verse, verse. Excuse me, Genesis 32, the 22nd verse. I did that. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two, ser his two servant wives, and his 11 sons and crossed Jabak River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all of his possessions. Tell somebody he was going somewhere. He was going, he was going somewhere. somewhere. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until dawn began to break. <clears throat> when, he, when the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. And then the man said, let me go, for the dawn is breaking. Thank you, Jesus. And Jacob declared, I will not let you go until you bless me. I want to deal with the subject of, and it's still God. And it's still God. Still God. So basically what we have here, quick context. Jacob <clears throat> was uh, given a commandment of the Lord to go back to his original land. Okay. Right? Which was now owned by Esau, I would like to say. It was now owned by Esau. Jacob was intimidated because him and Esau had beef. That's right. He's right. That's they right. had art. And so God gave him the commandment mm -hmm. with him and his 11 uh, servants and his two servants' wives. That's what? 15 people. And his two wives, 16, 17, and Jacob being 18. Mm -hmm. Told him to go mm. back and possess the land. And Jacob's imagination, if you can give me some theological uh, uh, expanding he said, now what in the world is this? Right. You're sending me back to the land that did not want me. And here's the thing. Esau now has an army of about 400 That's people. right. And he was the one. He got the command to go and possess what would overtake him. Wow. Come here. 
All right. Sometimes we get in experiences in our life where we don't realize how God wants to work it out in the long run. Right? The Pastor way. teaches us to play the long game. Yeah. Okay. And so Jacob's biggest concern and his biggest worry, he was his own worst enemy. Right. Maybe that's nobody. Okay. As PD would say, not us. But we know but you know people. But we know people. Uh-huh. So sometimes in this predicament, the enemy was his greatest enemy. Mm-hmm. Right? So Jacob says, mm, here's the kicker in the scripture. You don't see not one hesitation for the word of the Lord that Jacob was given. Right. In your life, church, sometimes you have to get to the space, as, as uh, Dr. Wooten says, to do it afraid. Yes. Do it knowing it's 400, it's an army of 400, and I'm only coming with 18. Wow. Oh my God. And ain't none of us for Bring it. <laughs> you have to get to the point in your life and in your faith where you can out talk yourself. Wow. Right? Out talk. Right, son, that's good. Yeah. Preacher, you're talking off the script right now. David said he encouraged himself. Uh-huh. He talked past him. In the Lord. He talked past his anxiety, past his panic. Past his frustration, past his worry. Tell somebody it's still God. It's still it's God. God. He couldn't look at nobody else. He couldn't get on social media and find a bunch of cute memes to agree with his illogical references and thoughts. He couldn't get on the internet and he couldn't send out a group text. Y'all pray for me. I'm overwhelmed. And nobody gave him a pity party. None of his camp talked to him about what he was going through. So sometimes in friendship, you got to have some people around you that ain't going to give you the answer that you want. Yes. They never give you the one you want. They never give you the one that you want to hear. There are spaces in my life where I thank God they didn't answer me. Yes. Tell somebody, I thank God they didn't talk to me. I thank God. Because had they agreed with me, I would have outran my promise. Wow. Had they agreed with me, I would have outran my purpose. Had they agreed with me, I would have outran the blessing. Because here's the thing. Jacob was on his way to the blessing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So now, history always teaches us in this scripture, don't let me go to your blessing. Uh-huh. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Here's my revelation. Uh-oh. Jacob wrestled with anxiety. Yeah. Jacob wrestled with his own pain. Wow. Jacob wrestled with his own defeat. Laura Hill said, we often lose the battle before we even start. That's, that's what, that's what yeah, Evangelist Hill said, right? The miseducation, right? She said, we lose the battle before we even start the race. So imagine in your life, somebody said, this sounds familiar to me. This sounds very familiar to me. Sometimes, here's the, here's the kicker. Sometimes we hold up our own process. Yes, sir. Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. The issue is, I didn't need the blessing. I had the command. He said, go to the land and take it over. Possess it. Get in it and stretch out and inhabit it. That's, that's what it is to possess. I possess my car. I possess this phone. I possess right now this microphone. In, in, in the space that I'm in, I have the posture and the command of what I want it to be. Yeah. I possess this text right now as I'm as I'm giving you guys what it is. When you have a possession, there's some there's a big there's a big difference. Yeah. Yes. In football, when you have when you possess the ball, you have plays and strategies to get to the goal. Wow. Right? The Eagles not playing today. I'm excited. I get to do what I gotta do, go to my side and come home. I get to watch a couple other people lose. I'm very excited about that today. Right? Praise the Lord. When you have possession on down. It means you're in the driving force to the ball. I'm in range of my goal. And now I have strategy. And quarterbacks have helmets. They're not just helmets. They're like multi-million dollar pieces of equipment on their head. Where they can listen to the coach but not be distracted. Tell somebody, I have possession. I, I have possession. I have possession. And it's still God. And it's still God. I'm not worried about what's going to happen along the way because I have his helmet. I have the plays. I have the strategies. I have the calls. I have the armor. Hallelujah. So I don't worry myself and get mundane at my own self. They used to say, hide me in the cleft of the rock. 
Because if you give me your full amount of glory, I might not be able to, I might run from it because I will feel disqualified. Yeah. Yes. Maybe that's that. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. You, you, God gave you a clear, short sign of what you were qualified for, and you said, No, no, no. And that's just making up it's not for me. No, maybe, maybe that's just me. But there are some times in our life where we make it hard on ourselves. Yes. Jacob said, I want you to bless me. The, the Lord was saying to him, But I already did. But I already did. I gave you my word. Yes. So if I give you my word, I've given you safety. If I give you my word, I've given you provision. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff are with me. They comfort me. Yes, my God. Tell somebody, you got to be learned to be comforted with his word. You got to be learned. You got to be learned. You shouldn't. I, I want to I talk to the rest of the year going into 2024. Don't hold up your process overthinking what he's told you. Maybe that's just, that's just that's for you and me. We'll talk about this later over a burger. All right? But don't hold up your process worrying, over worrying about what God has called you to. Over worrying. He took him, and here's the thing he had provision for his family. He had provision for his stuff. Well, God, if I go this way, then I'm going to lose this. And I go this way, I'm going to lose that. If I, if I go this way, they might not be with me. So what? Here's the other part. He sent, the Bible says in, in that chapter, he sent away his servants, he sent away his wives for him to have a, tell somebody, sometimes you need a long time. Yes. A long time. Tell somebody, it's still God. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. He sent them away because here's the thing. If I open up my theological knowing and my preferences, he needed some time to expand his thought process and to deal with God on the fact that you're sending me into a land where I feel like I'm going to get killed. Right. You're sending me into places that I'm not qualified for, and I know when I get into the room, I'm going to be the smallest fish there. Mm. So you want me to take me and my 18 yeah. to an army of 400, and they already looking for us. That's right. See, you, they, 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 already, they already are looking for him. Right. And the fact that he is now in another, God said, you've been in this land too long. Wow. So now it's time for you to go back to where you belong and take it over. Yeah. I know that seems crazy to think about the fact that he was sent. Why are you sending me back? Why can't you send me to another land? Right. It's, it's so many big ones. Can't you send me to a little a little Rehoboth, a little Geshemina, a little Gosha? You want me to go back to where they didn't even want me? Tell somebody you still got influence. You still it's still influence. I know it's hard to believe that because they saw when they saw you, you was a mess. When they saw you, you were a mess. You didn't have nothing. They said that you was never gonna be nothing. They did not have the ear and the eye to see beyond your then. My Lord, your then. Your then. Tell somebody that was my then. Now I got. Now I got family. I got a little money now. I got a couple things to my name. I got a couple notches on my belt. I got a few accomplishments. But tell somebody, it still wasn't enough. So he said, why? I won't let you go until you bless me. But the angel said, but you're already blessed. So the Bible says the angel touched his hip. And I'm going to close there. He touched his hip. And put it out of joint. Put it out of socket. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to be careful at the price of your blessing. Wow. Because he will give you what you want. Mm -hmm. And then change your name. That's it. See, oh, that's, that, 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 that's the part of the scripture that we don't often talk about. Let me go back to God. the 32nd verse. The Bible says, why do you want... No, that, that's a couple verses ahead. He replied, your name will... Go your name will no longer be Jacob, the man said. From now on, you will be called Israel. That's right. yeah, yeah. You have to understand that when Jesus has you on an assignment, it is often bigger than you. It's always going to be bigger than you. There's more in you than what you're recognizing. But now you don't want to deal with the fact that I gave you the clearance to get there. Now I got to touch you. And when people see you live, they'll understand that you survived. My glory experience. Tell somebody sometimes there's there's scars to this thing. There's scars to surviving the glory. There's scars to being close to God. There's scars. And we might not like it. We might not feel nothing from it. But tell somebody, somebody sees the change. 
sometimes, sometimes it's not enough for him to just bless you. Sometimes he has to change. Sometimes they have to learn to see the God in you. So when I walk with the Lord, the Bible says that we're overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Jacob, why you? No, excuse me. Israel, why you? Well, my name's not Jacob anymore. It's Israel. Because sometimes we want God to just bless us and shine light on us and shimmer us and just say, God, thank you for all that you've done. No, no, no. But now I have to touch something on you. One, because you didn't think I would do it. Two, because you didn't recognize that me talking to you enough was the blessing. Me having open communication to you enough was the blessing. Three, now I need people to show, I need people to see that, they spend, that you spend time with me. It's not just about what's going to happen from the blessing. It's about the it's about testimony. It's about the, the, the do after it. The do and the do after the blessing. It's about the stench. It's about the aroma. It's about what fragrance are you leaving? How what's the indication that you've been with me? Your indication is your influence marker. It is how people determine how they will see you. Some people saw you and they knew you as a home. Some people saw you, they knew you as a hooker. Some people saw you, they knew you as a crackhead, a cokehead, whatever. But now, I, baby, tell somebody, I got a limp. I got a, I got a limp now. You don't have to worry about how they, you don't got to worry about what I was. Because I've been through sure enough signs, and I've been through sure enough, and now i got an example of how he can keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. Tell somebody, I got a limp now. I got a I got, now. I got two more minutes and I really want to close. Tell somebody you have to appreciate your limp. Yeah. There are some scars that I have in my on my body that I thank God that He let me some. There are some spaces that I've been in. I've sat in hospitals with all types of tubes in me and my chest cavity open. Hallelujah. I'm excuse me, with, with the side of my, my insides open. Hallelujah. With two with uh, had two, no, what's it called when you're oh, I had a collapsed lung, excuse me. I had a left collapsed lung, I had a diaphragm rupture, hallelujah. And sometimes when I'm in the shower and, and I'm putting on my moisturizer, I rub my I, I rub myself down and moisturize myself. I get caught up and sometimes I, I, I realize that he kept me. Tell somebody your limp is the realization that he kept. It, it, it tell somebody it's still God, it's still you don't look around to blame nobody else, honey. Stop. Close up the book. Close up the shadow work journal. Hallelujah. Close up the Bible. And sometimes you just got to begin to lift your hands and say, it's still God. Hang up the phone. Don't call nobody else on a three-way. Don't look at no more mean to try to, to try to be a bomb to your situation that you don't want to give to the Lord. Tell somebody, I got a limp. And it's still God. I can't. Situation that I can look around and say it's still so imagine Jacob getting into future situations. I don't want to take my time, Pastor. Um, imagine Jacob getting into, to, to, into some future situations and he's looking around and as he's doing what he's supposed to do, he has a memory glimpse. I say he did it from, if he did it before, if he did it, he will do it again. Tell somebody I gotta he'll do it again and don't take on me. I, I, I recognize that my lip brought me. Hallelujah. Pastor often says, hitherto have the Lord brought me. Hallelujah. Be because if I remember how far back I've come, if I remember this situation, I wrestled with God and got this room. It's, it's nobody else gave to somebody. Nobody else gave me this. It, it's God that gave me this. It's God that gave me this strange assignment. It's God that put me in this strange place. It's God that keeps on helping me and burdening me to help people that don't want to help me. And tell somebody, it's God. It's God. It's, it's God. I have no other choice. I have no other decision. I recognize now that when he speaks, I'm going to just go. Song says, where he leads me, I will follow where he leads me. I go with him, with him all the way. I go with him through the judgment. I go with him through the judgment. I go with him, with him all the way. We have to get an all the way experience now where we are in our lives because we are realizing people are walking around and they see you, but you don't see you. That's it. Uh -huh. I know that's true. Right. They, they see you, 
but you don't see you. They recognize that there's something a little bit yeah. meticulous about you. There's something a little bit, there's a little limp with you and it makes them ask you. It look like you've been through something. How did you? Your lip might be surviving suicide. Your, your lip might be surviving the overdose. Your lip might be surviving domestic abuse. Your lip might be getting your kids out of a domestic situation. Your lip is not my lip, but tell somebody, we got it together. We got, I have a short, tall tail sign that God is with me and reflecting in me. And when I sit down at the end of the day, there's nobody else to blame because it's still God. Stay to your feet. It's still God. It's still God. It's still God. It's still God when you can't see it. It's still God when it doesn't line up. It's still God when you when you feel like everyone, no one sees you. No one sees you. It's still God. When God puts you all the way into the dirt. And it takes years for you to come. When you bury bamboo. Excuse me, when you plant bamboo, it takes six years to root. Six years it takes for it to root. But it's still there. It's testimony, it's still God. It's still God. Even when we can't control how they view us, testimony is still God. It's still God. Even when my thought process is overwhelming me because I really don't want the assignment that he gives me. Oh. Tell somebody it's still God. It's, it's still God. Every aspect of your life. The truth is, we preach Jacob sometimes as thank God that he wrestled with him. But the reality is, is that he did not have to have a limb. Mm, mm, mm. Oh. You have to wrestle. Ah, okay. I thought I'd be sat down because I said that. He did not have to have a limb. He said, I'm calling you to go back to the land. Jacob said, nah, bro, you're not calling me. Not for real. I got all these kids now. You call me when I got 11 servants. That's a lot to pack up back in the day. It's not like, it's not like David, it's not, it's not like just pulling up Big Sadie and throwing everything in there and shifting it in the drive, right? And going on our way. It's not like that. He had to pack up horses and donkey and livestock, chickens, food. He had, but here's the thing, because God said it, he provide, He gives provision. When he speaks, he will give provision. So don't be frustrated along the way that make you say, I need to have a conversation with God right now, because it's not working out. Jacob basically had a tantrum. And said, I need a meeting with you right now. ASAP. ASAP. And what happened from there? He got a limp. Now we thank God for it. Because it teaches us that sometimes, even in the Old Testament, when they could, how they could hear from him, how he heard from him, it still gives to question. Am I still enough for the journey? But tell somebody, it's still God. It's still God. Put your hand over your oh, oh, put your hand on your mind and just just declare it's still God. I know, I know it's hard. I know it's long. I know it's an annoying process. But tell somebody it's still God. They get on my nerves, but it's still God. They don't know how to shut up sometimes, but it's still God. I know I overthink everything that you told me, Father, but it's still God. The cup is not going to. Can I tell you something? The cup is not going to. You might as well go ahead and get ready to sip it up. It is not going to pass. It's going to be the best tussing you ever had, as my grandmother used to say. Tell somebody it's still God. And I know we're in a society where it teaches us how to mute, um, how to mute adversity and how to get adversity out of the way, but there's no way around it. The fact that he calls us to this. James Stephen said, Nobody told me that the road would be easy. That's my generation. But I can't, I don't believe that he's brought me this far to leave me. I don't feel no ways time. Come too far. From where, if, if, if Jacob might have had James Cleveland back in, back in the day, he might have been okay. But he didn't have him. Hallelujah. So he started to ask questions. But I don't believe that you've come too far from where I started out. Oh, nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave. It's still God. Thanks, God. Lift your hands. 
And today, Father, as we pray, Father, help us to know that it's still God. Thank you. Help us to know that the frustration, help us to know that, that in times of panic and in times of worry, in times of not being comfortable with the decisions that you made, is still God. We trust you for the greater. We trust you for the product of obedience, Father. Help us to lean on you, Father God. Help us to do exactly what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. With all thine heart, God. Help us to trust so that we won't lean to your, our own understanding. But in all of our ways, we will acknowledge you that is still God. We trust you with the work that you've given us. We trust you, Father, with so much, God. We ask that you help us, God, that as much as we appreciate the limb, we don't want it to be the only tall tale sign that we have been with you, Father. We trust your plan for our lives. And, Father, no, we won't let, we, we will in times understand that you have blessed us so we don't have to wrestle with you. Father, in spaces that we feel like we need you and we want to have a tissy and we want to go all, Father God, steal us to remember that you called us to the land. You called us to the community. You called us to the people. You called us to the offices where we work and the jobs that we have, Father. We are there as ambassadors. So, Father, we trust you and we surrender to you that it's still God. As we go from this place, Father God, keep us throughout this day, God, that we will be a blessing to somebody else. Let us go home, Father God. Let us learn to uh, get into spaces, Father God, that we can commune with you consistently, Father, and you give us strategy in knowing that it's still God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 God bless you, son. Amen. Yes. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. I'm sorry about that.